Hello everyone, Storm101 here. Today we'll be doing my secondary weather thoughts video and we'll be taking a look into some models. We'll actually be taking a look to the color prediction center's uh, weather forecast. We'll also be talking about the new and the old farmer acts winter forecasts as well. What changes we've kind of seen since my last one. We'll be taking a look at all to that stuff. We are going to start off with the uh, PowerPoint here about the Quad Prediction Center. Talk about the Enzo region. We're actually officially in a La Nina now. A La Nina advisory has been issued by the Quad Prediction Center. And all this was back into last Monday, back on the 14th. And as you can see here, Nino 4, it's a little bit cool. It warmed up just a little bit. Not a whole heck of a lot, but you can tell by these other Enzo regions, usually below 0.5 degrees Celsius is considered a La Nina stage. And you can see here, Neon 3.4, Neon 3, which is actually the coldest, some of the coldest, uh, where some of the coldest waters are. I don't know why I cannot spit that out. But even on 1 plus 2 here, it's also negative one degree Celsius there. Or in other words, a degree below average. In other words. Now, so this is considered to be a La Nina at this point. And let's go ahead and look at two. Uh, now this is back at the September uh, the 10th. Geek Siri got Chilly water started to come up to the surface. That's sub. Now these are subsurface temperature anomalies. These are under. This is underwater here. You also do us have warmer than normal uh, subsurface temperatures in the western portion of the Enzo there. Now one of the causes here is we got some winds going on. These are some of the wind anomalies here. When you got a little bit of wind, usually it will keep the waters cool down. And that's why we're kind of heading into why we are in La Nina, because we've been getting some winds. That's been going on there recently. And taking a look into here, now just your probability Enzo outlook, you can see here, there's a pretty good chance we'll be going into a uh, La Nina this winter. DGF, that's an average for the entire winter, December, January, or February. February. That's currently in a 70 to 80% chance we'll be seeing a La Nina this winter. These are model guidance here. Keep about below this 0.5 line is your uh, La Nina territory. You can see here, some, the majority of them are having this as a weak La Nina. So we've got to keep an eye on that there. As this is like, we could be a little bit overdone. At least that's what I've heard from the uh, uh, Climate Prediction Center. You can see it's showing a moderate to strong La Nina, which I don't think we'll be seeing that this winter. And uh, I think that's pretty much it from there. So, what do we, what happens when we see a a La Nina? Well. This is what happens when we typically have a La Nina. So what we have, so at the northwest, usually it'd be cold and wet. Usually. You got your Pacific jet stream there that's bringing your moisture. Then you got your polar jet stream around the same time. Usually when you get these two together, usually you can get some big systems here. Especially when it gets to this point right here. Usually on the northern or eastern side, usually gets quite a bit of snow of that system here to eventually start to make a curve a little bit more to the northeast in those areas in the Ohio Valley and portions of the Tennessee Valley are usually wet. But they're not only wet, not only they're wet, it's also warm. You can see this red line here, that's warm, uh, warm temperatures there, and also overlaps to weather to normal conditions as well. So that's what typically happens in the line here, but I've seen stuff on Twitter that um, he had analogs here of typical, I think, line is 
But there was something else that was also leaning into Alania, and he put all those years together that was similar to it, actually looked a little bit different. It was actually cooler than normal across the Tennessee Valley, the Hall Valley, where this graphic is showing to be warm. And it was also wetter than normal, too. So you kind of have the match there. So but we'll see about that. I'm not going to be able to find it because that was a little bit ago there. But that's just something I want to mention out there. You can also notice across the south is also warm and dry as well. And the models are really matching up to that. To a setup like this there. They are really matching it up with it. So let's take a look at some models. This is the, C the CFS model here. Now this is your 500 millibar geo potential height anomalies. And as you can see here, you got some bridging across the southeast there. That's what we need to watch for. Because if we're going to see a strong bridge to the southeast, then people good chunk of people in the eastern United States won't see a good winter to keep in mind of that. Most of your cold air is looking to be staying in Canada, however. Uh, but some also may kind of go back and forth about the PNA. And you can tell about your PNA. It's actually a little bit farther to the west here. You can see here some of your strongest uh, geopotential heights there. More than likely there's going to be a high pressure there. But since it's that so far to the west, <clears throat> that's going to keep your cold air a little bit further to the west. And especially when we have a southeast ridge. Now, if the southeast ridge wasn't here, all this cold air would be across a good chunk of the United States here. If that really does happen. So, it's really all eyes on the southeast ridge at this point here. And if we take a look to a different model quite similar although it does keep it the cold air further north and um, you can see her across the south um, with likely some ridging you also got your PNA out here which is positive but it's further to the west there than east now if you want a good winter for the PNA you would want this South Alaska it just from the west coast here. They'll make all that cold air not lead to the west and be more to the east. And that's what some of the people in the eastern United States, if you want snow, that's something you will want. But it doesn't really quite look like that for right now. Your AO is looking to be um, looking to be a positive AO, which is not a good sign. And also your NAO is also looking to be positive as well. So that's not too good of a sign there. Uh, for this winter here, and this winter could potentially lead to a warm winter, which is not what a lot of us want. Now, if we go back to the CFS model, it's quite similar to that. So, so far, it's looking to be kind of going downhill this winter here. Now, this is the JAMSEC model here. This is your sea surface temperature anomalies. There's actually some good news here around Alaska there. You got very warm sea surface temperatures there. That could lead to a negative NAO there. But this is the only model showing that. However, this model here just got updated a couple days ago. So this is a fresh new run out of the jam stack there. So I want you guys to keep in mind of that. So, But you also you got your positive PNA here. It's actually a little bit further to the east. Now it's much farther to the north but it is further to the east there so that could potentially lead to some cold air across the central and eastern united states there let's go back to the cfs model here let's take a look to precipitation anomalies here go by a three month average you can see here across the most of california the desert southwest the summer plains into the southeast look to be over a drop even along the east coast is looking to be dry which is a possibility. Got weather normal conditions across the northwest and over plains, and even got another area of weather normal conditions across portions of the mid Mississippi Valley, the Ohio Valley, to the portions of Great Lakes uh, region there. So, by looking at this here, your jet stream is going to be something like this here. Wherever I kind of look into this here, your jet stream will be something like this here. 
And um, take into consideration here, most of your cold air actually may stay in the northern plains in the upper Midwest. Just by looking into this here, then across a good chunk of the easier United States, unfortunately. There. Let's take a look to the Kansas model. It's actually quite a little bit different here. So it's actually quite dry across the central eastern United States, even across the southwest. The only area that's wetter than normal is across the northwest. So we so far have a pretty good agreement about the northwestern United States. Now, I'll say the Kansas ball is a little bit questionable about this, especially across the central and east portions of the eastern United States. It's quite questionable. Don't really quite 100% agree with the Kansas model with the precipitation with that there. Let's take a look into the uh, Jamstack model here. You can see here, there's actually quite a, a good agreement here with the CFS here, although it is a little bit wetter than the other models. You can see it's above to well above normal precipitation across the Tennessee Valley, the Hall Valley, portions of the Great Lakes there. Could potentially see some above normal precipitation. It's dry across the far southeast of the United States. It's also dry the west coast of California. It's a little bit wetter than normal across the northwest. It's also wetter than normal across the northeast. So that's not bad of a looking winter for really anybody. If you take this into consideration, your jet stream may look like something like this here. Maybe having potentially some colder plunges here across the Northern Plains, the Midwest, even maybe even across portions of the Great Lakes. So that'd be a pretty good winter there if it's here to verify there. Now let's take a look to two meter temperature anomalies or just, you know, say surface temperatures here. Now likely these are going to be too warm because this is based off older averages here. So. It's showing most of the United States warmer than normal. Do I think that would happen? No. I don't think all of the United States will be warmer than normal. I think the better chance for warmer than normal conditions will be across, you know, probably the southeast of the United States, across the Southern Plains, and probably maybe into portions of the southwest. That's a possibility. But remember I said being too warm? If you take these here to a break it down a couple of notches with the warmth and the cold air showing potentially very chilly temperatures or probably at the polar vortex could be sticking around across portions of Canada there I mean that's just some very cold temperatures there if that verifies there but generally CFS is not really showing a good winter at all with the two meter temperature anomalies now, Kansas ball, pretty much the same thing here. Too warm on this ball run here, showing the entire United States warmer than normal, which I disagree. And I don't think the entire United States will be warm. That's a definite no. There's no way the entire United States would be warm. I mean, areas of the United States would be warmer than normal, but not the entire United States there. So I disagree with the CFS, the Kansas model. Then when you look at two, the Jamstack model is quite similar, but the biggest difference here is you got a strong severed ridge here. You can see showing by the Kansas ball more into the, the central United States. But when you look into the CFS, showing a strong ridge across the south. But when you look into the Jamstack model, it's showing very strong ridging across the southeast there which is not a good sign although this is a good sign for the northwest even along the west coast there you can see there showing some cooler to normal conditions there across the west coast of the northwest which is would be pretty nice for the northwestern United States but but with these models here it, it will likely change some more since we are still into, we're starting to enter late September at this point here. So we're still quite far out here. And these models around here will probably likely start to change. Also to keep in mind that the two meter temperature anomalies with the James Lake model are also too warm. All these models here would be too warm. 
we'll be getting a new set of averages um, in 2021, so that way the models won't be so warm like this here. They'll be likely be cooler, so just wanted to put that out there there as well. All right, let's take a look at two of these forecasts here. This is the Climate Prediction Center's forecast. I do agree some on this forecast here. It's showing it warm across the south, even across the northeastern United States. I don't think the northeastern United States would be that warm, in my opinion. I'll do. I do agree with the core to normal conditions placement across the northern plains, even into the northwestern United States. Although, it probably would make a little bit better sense to expand that a little bit more into the Great Lakes region. There's a, but overall, I do agree with the Climate Prediction Center's forecast there. Now, precipitation forecast, which I also do agree some here as well. Dry, very dry across the south here. I've, that's what you typically see in the La Nina you know, pattern. You can see the northern places also would be quite wet there. But I think I would expand it to the, probably into Washington and Idaho as well. For those weather normal conditions. You also do have another area of weather normal conditions across portions of the Ohio Valley as well. Which I do agree there as well. Although I probably would expand that to the southeast. To include more of Kentucky, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania there. I think it will make a little bit better sense there. But overall I do agree with their precipitation forecast. Now this is the Farmer's Almanac forecast here. The new, the newer version. You can see here it's looking mild to dry across the northwest there. You can see here even across the southwest is showing normal temperatures. Wet coastal regions, snowy inland. I don't know about that. Although I do disagree with the northwest there as well. The central northern plates cold above normal snowfall, which I do agree with that. Maybe not so much for the central plains, but I do I do highly agree with the northern plains. The several plains, temperamental, wild swings from mild to tranquil to cold and wintry. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really know. What all that really means to be honest but basically they're saying probably like a warm start then be a cold and wintry end probably to put that in simpler form there so do I agree eh, probably not so much on that there you got the Great Lakes the Ohio Valley even into forces the Tennessee Valley cold and very flaky flaky means very snowy so that's probably what that's what they're predicting. Probably where most of the snow could be that could be this one here when it's showing very snowy. You know it's gonna be very snowy. There. Do I agree? Eh, somewhat agree. Probably not to include Tennessee, maybe not even Kentucky. They're probably more for Ohio, Indiana, and probably Michigan there as well. The southeast chilly and showery, which I do disagree with that. I think there'll be a southeast ridge in place for those to also be a little bit drier as well. The mid-Atlantic seasonably cold, wet, and white. I do agree with that. And even the northeast, northeast United States, I do agree a little bit better. Cold and snowy. Maybe not that cold, but I'll probably say they could be snowy as well. But overall... On the Farmer's Almanac forecast, I'll give this an accuracy on this forecast. You know, in my opinion, probably at 50%. Probably 50-50. Well, I do agree with this forecast. I agree 50% of it. I disagree 50% of it. To put that into simple form there. And now, let's take a look at two, the old Farmer's Almanac forecast here. And kind of all over, all over the place with your forecast here, to be honest. We'll start off with the west. Cool and dry conditions across portions of California, which I do agree with that somewhat. Wet, you bet. I think it would be wet across those, of those regions. Snow pelting, then melting. 
probably what they're saying there is probably snowing. Probably snowy at first and then maybe not as snowy into the probably into later in the winter. I don't know what that quite means. I don't like some of the terms they use on here because some of it just doesn't make any sense. Just in my in my opinion with the old farmer's almanac. The white area, it's snow time. Probably means it's gonna be snowy in those regions. Do I agree? Probably not so much. How so how far south it goes. Um I don't think it'd be that snowy across Texas, Mexico, portions of Oklahoma, even Colorado and Kansas. I don't think it'd be that snowy into some of those regions. Dark blue area, more wet than white. I don't know about that, to be honest. Do you got this color here? Excuse me. Sorry, guys. Um, uh, light, very light blue. Sign, I don't know what this color is, but not so cold, not too wet. I'll probably agree better a little bit further up to north, but not so much to the southeast. Florida, gorgeous. I think they can see some gorgeous weather down there. That's probably one of a couple areas I do agree with. Sheets of, uh, sheets of sleet, that's the Midwest, portions of the northeast. I do somewhat agree with that. Far northeast of the United States and to New England. It's snow time. I do agree. This snow dumps across portions of Michigan and Wisconsin. That would be due to some lake effect snow, which I do agree there as well. But I probably would add maybe a couple more areas as well, probably to include Lake Michigan, maybe Lake Erie and Ontario there as well. But overall, I probably I probably do agree. 30 to 40 percent of the forecast. And disagree 60 to 70 percent. So really, overall, I disagree with their forecast here. I agree a little bit better with the old new Farmers Almanac than the older one. But overall, the old Farmers Almanac forecast is predicting a quite a warm winter. Meanwhile, the new Farmers Almanac is predicting potentially a very cold and very snowy winter. But I don't really 100% agree with both of those forecasts. So that probably gave you guys a little bit of an idea of what I'm predicting for this winter. I also almost forgot about something. Let me try to get there very quickly here. That um, Now we're going to talk about a little bit about, if you guys remember, the Denver snowstorm here. And that's been going on. Well, that has happened, of course. And uh, a big shout out to Chris Bailey because he found some analogs that were similar to like the Denver snowstorm there. Let's see if I can find it here. I may not be able to find it. Uh, let's, let's see here, but the point is, uh, just to give you guys the analogs, the years there were similar to, um, you know, the Denver snowstorm here. Looks like I'm not going to be able to fight it, unfortunately, but anyways... Oh, wait, here we go. I found it. So we're going to scroll down this here all the way. Again, big shout out to Chris Bailey for doing this here. So these are, now this is the top five earliest measurable snowfalls in modern history for Denver. September 3rd, 1961. September 8th, 1962. September 12th, 1989. September 12th of 1974, and then September 24th of 2000. Now, he's only doing this for around Kentucky. Now, this can include some of the surrounding states, but kind of gives a little bit of an idea of what could look like this winter here, especially for Kentucky and some of the surrounding states here. But this is what they bring afterwards. 
The exterior of the winter in 1961-62 was much colder than normal with record cold in January. When you think about that, probably this can look like a harsh winter across the northern plains, even across the Great Lakes, maybe even the northeast. It was also a little bit above normal for snowfall. The winters of 62-63 was historic future below zero temperatures in each month. Record lows were also set in each month. Clean the coldest temperatures ever recorded with a negative 21 and negative 20 degrees on back-to-back -back mornings of January. Whoops on that. It was also the fourth coldest winter on record and feature above normal snowfall. Things are going to change a little bit here. The winter in 1974-75 was the only winter when there was really nothing outside of the ordinary showing up for cold. Snowfall was close to average. That's kind of like a warm to maybe probably a little bit warmer in winter. The winter in 1989-90 was also historic. Featured the coldest December on record with eight days with lows going below zero. Seven of those set record lows, including the coldest December temperature ever recorded at negative 19 degrees. Snowfall was much above normal for the month. This pattern flipped with a dime January and February with almost snow free with record warmth. That's why I mean about a big change on it, but I think that's going to be kind of unlikely with this month here. I don't think it'd be that cold for December, although things could change. The most recent one, 2000-2004, featured the second coldest December on record. Not a single morning dipped below zero, but we did get into a single digit many mornings. This was consistent cold that gripped the area. Snowfall was much above normal and well above the official total. That's back when the National Forest Service didn't have observer to actually measure snow in just guess from 80 miles away. January feature above normal snowfall and slightly colder than normal temperatures. This pattern broke quickly in February. So, but really overall, there is a little something in common here, and that's really December, you know, even into parts of January, seem to be very cold across Kentucky. Now, this can include, you know, the Northern Plains and the Great Lakes. That kind of gets me an idea that we probably have some very strong troughing across the Northern Plains, the portions of the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, the Great Lakes, even into the Northeast United States. So these are like big time Arctic blasts. You know, polar vortex comes in, but it seems like it doesn't last throughout the entire winter. And we feel like it to most of these winters here. But they also did feature some above normal snowfall. So this is kind of the indication here that we could potentially see maybe a little bit of a harsh winter, which is a possibility. There's a lot of other things to look at too. We also got, you know, woolly worms, which I found my first woolly worm here in my house in central Kentucky, which is predicting a very mild winter. But then I saw someone else on Twitter saw a fully black woolly worm which indicates a harsh winter so we don't really quite know yet but we'll find out there when we get into october but really things can still change from now till then here but really the next time that we talk about the winter this video will likely be a winter forecast which i'm not percent sure when i'm going to do one yet but we'll see about that but Anyways, guys, this is all for you guys today. Hope you guys did enjoy my secondary Winter Thoughts video. If you guys like this video, hit the like button if you really do like my channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so you're there for upload. If you guys have questions about this, comment in the comment section down below. I want you guys questions. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.